So in the previous video we had this scenario where we increment EAX starting at zero and then we said well jump to do it again which brings us up here and then we increment and then we jump and we increment and 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 we jump and, we increment and, we jump and, we jump and the computer is going to do this over and over and over again. The processor is going to get extremely hot, um, <clears throat> burn up a lot of power. It's definitely not going green as far as the environment is concerned. Uh, we need a way to not be so stupid and just jump. All right. Now I want to make our CPU count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then be done. But right now it's just going to keep going 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, on and on forever as far as we allow it to run. Um, this JMP or this jump instruction is what we call an unconditional branching statement. Now what do I mean by branch? Um, by branching, I mean, we basically, we can either go down or we can go up, kind of like a tree branch. If you look at a tree branch, this is a pathetic branch, but part of it will go that way or part of it will go that way, and that is called a branch. All right, well, the same thing with these, this jump instruction, except instead of going down, it unconditionally always goes up, so it's like this twig instead of a branch. There's not a another piece hanging off of it like so. We need a way to say, you know what, sure enough, Go round and go round and go round, but then once you hit five, then break out, go back to C plus plus land and be done. All right, there's jump instruction. It's unconditional though. It doesn't check that condition. It's, it's do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Off you go. No ifs, ands, or buts. Well, if you remember in, the, in one of the previous videos, I showed you the compare instruction. Alright, and the number I want to count up to, at least for purposes of this video, is 5. So I'm going to compare EAX to 5. And if you remember, all the compare does is set the sign bit and the zero bit in the flags register, or the sign flag and the zero flag in the flags register. And if you remember from those videos, um, let me just bring it up, I'm going to hit F11 here, F11, and we can see the flags register here, and the sign flag and the zero flag are hiding out in this nibble, so let me just draw that nibble here, I'm going to draw like so, and the previous nibble, this is bits 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then we go 4, 5, 6, 7, so there is our nibble for this number right there. Um, if you recall, the seventh bit is our sign bit, all right, there's sign flag, all right, and this is the zero bit or zero flag, all right, and if zero is one, that means the result of the compare was zero. If it's false, though, or zero itself, that means the result was not zero. Okay, and the only time we'll get zero with a compare is if the two values are equal. Uh, the sign value will be 1 if it's negative and 0 if it's positive. It's, it's just an indicator of the sign bit in the resulting number. If you want to brush up on your uh, positive and negative numbers and how we represent those in binary, please see the binary videos playlist. Okay, let's see if I can illustrate this. You're probably thoroughly confused. So we, we have our moves and our increments, but but after we do our compare, we instead of just jumping to do it again, we want to conditionally jump. That means, yeah, as long as it's less than 5, wrap around and go up here. But once we hit the value of 5, we're done. Just allow program execution to fall through and keep going as normal. All right? We're, we are going to do that with a conditional branching statement. Jump less than. All right? If our compare... If we can determine from our compare that the value of EAX was less than the value we were comparing against, 5 in this case, then sure enough, jump to do it again and do it again and keep incrementing until we hit 5. But once we hit 5, that's not going to be less than. So go ahead and fall through and go down here. All right, let's see if I can illustrate this. Let me, first of all, erase all this. And I'm going to start debugging by hitting F11. Control Alt D, F11, move into EAX 0, here's our 0. Increment EAX, that will change EAX to a 1. Compare EAX to a 5. Now pause the video and think, how is this value right here going to change when I do the compare? 
Did you get it? I hope I hope you got it. Well, the value right now is a 1. Okay, and I'm subtracting 5. And the result of that will be a negative 4. All right, so the value is negative. So that means the sign bit will be turned on, indicating negativity. Uh, is the value 0, though? Well, no, negative 4 is not 0. So that will be a 0, like so. So here we go. We'll have a 1, 0 here, and then these will... I haven't talked about these bits, but pay attention here. F11. It's a 9. All right, which indicates yes, a one here, a zero here. There's a zero there and a one there. All right, and that's that's all because of the compare instruction. Now that we've set up the state of these bits or these flags, we can examine them with the conditional branching statement. So just jump less than can look at this and say, well, the sign bit means it's negative. Okay, the result of the previous operation was negative, and since it's negative, that means that this is less than this. All right, here's our less than operator. So that's true, so that means, hey, jump to do it plus 5, which will bring us back up to here. All right, and let me hit F11. You can watch F11. This will jump up here. Boom. We're on this line of code, and our instruction pointer changed accordingly. All right, increment EAX, that goes to a 2. 2 minus 5 is no longer negative 4. It's a negative 3. But again, the negative 3 is not stored anywhere. Simply the result of, hey, was it negative? And was it 0? All right, let me um, F11 on that. Jump less than. Well, yep, we're less than. Increment again. So now we have a 3. All right, 3 minus 5. Well, that's still negative. Jump less than. Good. 4 minus 5. That's still negative. Jump less than. Now here's where it gets a little interesting or different, so to say. We increment EAX. That changes it to a 5. And now we are going to compare EAX to 5. So let me update our, our uh, math here, if you would. All right, EAX has a 5 in it, and we are subtracting 5. All right, what will be the result? Well, the result will be 0, but what's, what's going to be the result as far as, as th these bits or these flags are concerned? Pause the video and think about it. Okay, well, let me erase these, like so, and put that line back up there. Okay, is the sign negative? Well, no, it's not negative. All right, so this will be a 0. And is the result a zero? Well, yes, it's a zero. So what can the CPU deduce from that? Well, they're equal. All right, EAX is equal to five because why did I do a zero there? <laughs> yes, it is zero. EAX is equal to five because the result was zero. So that means it's not less than. So when we do our jump less than, actually look down here. We're on the compare. Watch this hexadecimal value. We got a four six now, which represents one here, a zero here, and this one actually changed to a zero. And I know I haven't really told you what this flag means. Don't worry about it for now. The thing I'm interested in is the sign is zero, uh, or the sign is not negative, and the zero bit is turned on, meaning equality. So jump less than. Jump less than is going to say no. It's equal to. I'm not going to jump. So watch. Instead of going up to the increment, we're going to fall through to through the return right here. Okay, so that is called conditional branching. There's all sorts of conditional branches we can do in assembly. Uh, there's jump less than, there's jump less than, jump less than equal to. There's jump greater than, jump greater than, equal to. Um, these ones are kind of weird, though. Jump not less than or equal to. Jump not less than. Uh, jump not greater than or equal to. Yada, yada, yada. But there's something I want to tell you about not. It's hard to think in not. All right, so don't don't start using these nots. In fact, y you never really need to use a not. If I if I say hey, less than, what's the opposite of that? If if I say less than, what's the not of that? What's the opposite of that? Well, the opposite is greater than or equal to. All right, so instead of writing jump, not less than. Instead, write jump greater than or equal to. All right, you, you can use these knots, but oh, it's so hard to think in knots. It's your brain is not programmed to think in knots. Let me see if I, I can illustrate the truth of this. Say we had a a number line. All right, say here we go. Here's negative two, negative three, or not three, <laughs> negative one, right, zero. Uh, one, two, three, 
4. Well, if I asked you what is greater than or equal to the value 1, let's just pick on 1 here. Well, the values that are greater than or equal to 1 is everything that way. All right, but if I say, well, let's take the opposite of that, well, that would be everything that way. All right, so when I say this is greater than or equal to, and then everything down here is less than, so there's like this perfect divide right here as far as the integer number line goes, that everything over here is greater than or equal to 1, everything over here is less than. All right, and saying the opposite or not, what is the not of this? Well, it's everything over here. This is the not. So forego the not if you can. There's always another way of saying that without having to use not. Anyway, um, there you go. Conditional branching is important to know. It's also important to know that the compare instruction sets up the sign flag and the zero flag for the uh, conditional branching statement. So it's critical that you do the compare directly above the uh, conditional branching statement or the conditional jump statement.